A lot of people think that sourcing products is the hardest thing to do through Amazon FBA, but I actually think it's product analysis. It's actually working out whether a product is gonna sell and how much profit you can make from that product. And therefore, if you are struggling, please watch this video and I'll go through my top tips to make sure that every product you buy is a winning product. Once you've found your product that you want to sell through Amazon FBA, you've then got to ask yourself, is it a seasonal product? For example, gardening things are not going to sell very well in winter when it's cold and wet, whereas in the spring and the summertime, they tend to do much better because people are in their gardens. And also if you have like a Christmas related product, like an advent calendar, it's not going to sell very well around during the summertime, but it could sell very well just in the run up to Christmas. So you've obviously got to ask yourself, is it a seasonal product? And obviously, am I buying it in the right time to obviously generate sales? The next thing you need to look at is the actual brand of the product that you're trying to sell. Is it a reputable brand? Is it a high quality brand? Have they got good reviews? How long have they been going? You've got to think about the product as a bigger picture, where it's come from, who's made it. And obviously, if it has got a reputable brand, then it's more likely to sell well and sell in bigger units. So that is obviously something that you're going to try and look for. The next thing to consider is what sort of niche your product is in. Is it a high-end luxury item or is it a low-end budget item? Obviously with the high-end luxury items, the profit margins are a lot greater, but the volume of units is a lot lower. So you can probably expect to hold those products in stock for a lot longer time than obviously the low-end budget items, which will sell higher volumes, but at lower profit margins. So you've got to sort of work out whether it's going to be worthwhile you holding onto stock, which is really valuable, or you'd rather see your money getting invested into low-end stock, which are constantly churning out units, but just at a smaller profit margin. So once you've gone through those three things and you found out that it's a reputable brand that makes it, it's not a seasonal product, and you know what sort of niche it's in, then I think it's time to go to the computer or your phone and go on to sell at AMP. Now, if you started selling on Amazon FBA and you've just started your journey, you definitely want to sign up to sell at AMP. I've leave a link down below in the description. It is by far the best product analysis tool on the market that you can buy. And you speak to any Amazon FBA sellers, every single person uses it. There's a good reason for that is because it is so good. So when you click the link down below, you'll come to this screen. It'll tell you exactly what it is. There is a Chrome extension, so you can use it on your computer. There is also a mobile app that you can use. So it's really, really good when you're out and about, you can scan products using your phone. When you click start a free trial, it's for two weeks completely free. You won't be charged until at the end of the two weeks. And therefore it's around about 140 pounds a year, which is really, really good because it's like what, 12 pound a month. Uh, and this honestly is an invaluable tool that you're gonna need. So it's really not that expensive. And once you start generating profits anyway, it really isn't that bad. So that is Seller Amp and how to sign up to the process. It's very simple, very easy, but any questions, just let me know. So what I'm gonna do now, guys, is run through one of my best performing products that I've sold on Amazon FBA and how I use Seller Amp basically to understand what sort of product this is and what sort of profit margins I can expect to make and whether it's gonna be a good product to sell or not. So the first thing that's gonna happen once you've downloaded Seller Amp is you'll be greeted with this screen next to the products, which is really, really good because it's all built in so that every time you go on a product on Amazon, this screen will pop up and you can go through the analysis. So effectively what I did with this product was ask myself those three first three questions, which were, is it a seasonal product? No, because it's something to do with kids and digestive powder or something. So it's clearly not seasonal. Second thing was, is Garden of Life a reputable brand? Now definitely it is because I've done loads of research on it. It's a massive, massive brand and it's been around for years. So it is a reputable brand, so there's no issues with that. And then is it a high-end or is it a low-end budget item? Well, I'd say it's probably about in the middle. So it gets quite a decent amount of sales, but it's not the cheapest product on the market. So it's around about in the middle. So once I've understand those three things, I then looked into the uh, product analysis through Seller Amp. Now what I'm looking for here is what sort of reviews has it got? Look at that, 1,500 reviews and almost five star. So it's got very, very good reviews. So that is probably the first thing you need to look out for. And obviously it's very self-explanatory, but it's something that you can easily miss. We can see estimated sales of around 64 per month. Now a little tip with this is obviously if you get the estimated sales of around 64 per month, you can then estimate sales of around about two per day. So obviously being there's 30 days in a month, 31, 
You can just divide that number by the 31, you'll work out how many sales you can expect to make if you've got the buy box, i.e. the lowest price on the listing, how many sales you can make per day. So you'd probably be looking to make sales of around two per day, which actually is quite a true reflection if I'm honest, because I've been on the this listing for a while now, and I have actually been selling two to three items per day. So it's very, very accurate. Now, the simple things here, you've got to enter your cost price, so wherever you sourced it from, what you can expect to sell it from. Now, I always try and achieve like a 30% ROI. Now, obviously, it depends on what sort of ROIs you're working with, but in this case, I'm working at a 35% ROI with a £6.83 profit. So the next thing to look at is the ranks and the prices. The buy box is £33.99. The lowest Amazon FBA seller, which is the one that we're going to be looking at, is £33.99. Lowest FBM, which is basically they don't use Amazon, they just sell it on Amazon and they post it themselves, is $42.99. This is always going to be a lot, a lot more expensive because they, they're put basically trying to make more fit on the fees themselves. Uh, but we're not looking to do that, we're using Amazon FBA. So it's always important to look at the lowest FBA seller price. Now if the product is a well-known product that sells loads of units every day, it will give you an estimated time to sale, which is quite useful. But in this case, because it doesn't sell that many units per day, it's unknown for the time estimated time to sale. But it is quite easy to work out anyway. Like I said before, if you did this 64 divided by the 30 days, it's looking at about two units per day. So that is a good gauge of what to use for that section. Amazon have not been on the share buy box in the last six months, which is great. It's not a private label product um, because basically if a private label product uh, and you start selling on, on one of those, you can get shut down and it can have like really bad repercussions on your Amazon account. There's no IP issues. The size of it is tiny, so it's fine. This is what we call a keeper graph, and basically this is sort of a separate sort of analysis tool that you can use. And it basically looks at the price of the product, how many units it's had, what sort of reviews it's had, what sort of units of sales, and then you can basically gauge an idea of where this product is going. So if you see here, the offer count is raised, the review count is raised and although the rating is raised so it's really good product the more people that are buying it the more people are rating it the more people are rating it highly as well it's really really useful to understand how a product is performing obviously the more sales of it doesn't necessarily mean it's a more popular product it could be getting bad reviews and therefore sales are probably going to drop but in this case it's getting better reviews the more sales it has so that's a really, really good thing. So on this screen here, we can see the buy box. You can see it was around about $37.99. It's dropped to $34.99 and currently it's sat at $33.99. So it hovers around that price, which isn't bad at all because we're buying it for £19.17, selling it for $34 and then we're making about £6.83 profit margin. That is without being VAT registered, so basically VAT exempt. So don't pay any VAT on the Amazon fees. Now we're coming to one of the most important things that I think gets overlooked and it's actually who is selling the product, what sort of price they're selling it at and what sort of ROI they're looking to achieve if they've bought it at the same cost as we have. Now I think this is something that gets overlooked massively by other sellers and basically you want to try and avoid products that have got loads of Amazon FBA sellers because you're going to be competing for the buy box especially if you don't want to be see your product just sat there in storage and you want to try and sell it as quickly as possible you're going to end up competing for the buy box and your profit margins are going to go rock bottom because there's so many people competing on the same product and the same listing it just drives your profit margins down and it's something you want to try and avoid now when i started selling this product there was three amazon fba sellers on it including myself so i had barely any competition and it was absolutely brilliant i was getting all the sales Whereas now you can see there is at least 10 people on this listing, all through Amazon FBA sellers, and there's over, what, 24, 29, like about 60 or 70 products that are being sold, all through Amazon FBA sellers, all relatively at the same price. So you're then competing against 70 other units, and it's only selling two per day. So you can understand then that it's quite difficult to get sales for this product because there's so much competition. Now obviously if you're smashing it and going in really low price, you are going to get sales, but it's going to ruin your profit margins. So you really want to try and avoid listings which have got loads of sellers on it like this one because it just gets too competitive and it's something that I think loads of Amazon FBA sellers overlook. I think they get too hooked on the profit margins that you can achieve on a product and don't really look at the competition. 
Yes, I understand that Amazon sellers are going to be able to get rid of their stock quickly, but it's still a risk that you're going to have to take if you're going to go for it because there's so much competition. Um, and in the end, just speaking from experience, I end up just dropping my price too far because I want to get the money back to reinvest in all the more profitable products. So it is something that you need to bear in mind, especially when you're doing your products and analysis. So if you just started selling on Amazon FBA, I highly recommend that you use SellerAmp. I'll leave a link down below again in the description. If you want to check it out, that'd be amazing because it is an affiliate link and it really does support the channel. But I am going to wrap up the video there, guys. So I really do hope you've enjoyed it. Any problems, just give me a shout down in the comment section below. Please like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more money-making content like this. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.